quit making extraneous noise. The uh, bandsaw is probably one of the most useful tools we have in here. And I'm hoping that everybody will look at the sheet as soon as you get it. Uh, this handout has actual photos of the machine that we have. What are we looking at? There's a gun on Where? Yeah, I see it. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> Are we looking at the machine? Are you looking at the machine? Yeah. All right, there's two wheels to it. And the wheel at the bottom is called the driven wheel. The one on top is called the, the, the driven. This is the driver. The driver wheel has got the V-belt to the motor that's underneath it. And underneath the machine, there's a one and three quarter horsepower motor. It has a pulley on it, and that pulley makes this wheel turn. Now, what keeps the blade what keeps the blade turning and staying on, on track is that it's balanced on this wheel. Now, if you know a highway or a football field has a crown to it, it's done. So that the water runs off each edge. Same thing for highway. The paint is like this, so the water goes to the, the ditches on the side. Well, this wheel, there's a tire, a rubber tire, uh, on, the, on the upper wheel, and that tire has got to be. Two things, it's got to be tilted this way so they'll track, and it's got to be a far enough apart so that they'll put tension on the blade. All right, so the one right here, it looks like, it changes the tension. You can turn this one way or the other, and it makes the wheel go up or down. This looks like a lock for it, so I can take the blade off. Notice, did you notice that part? When I moved that, leave it, it brought the wheel down so the blade's not when I move that one lever, it puts tension on the blade. Now the blade's got to be tracked between these bearings down here. So if you get up close here, you can see this, at least with the video. So I'm going to adjust this so that this little slider thing is right next to the blade. The part here is called a guide post assembly. All right, the guide post assembly has this wheel here in the back that that gets turned. <coughs> See why I'm turning that to it, it's back almost touching the blade right here. Mm -hmm. right, the, the thing that you need to do is leave these alone unless it needs adjustment. Then you come tell me and we'll do it together. This part here, this wheel, this knob on the back you need to look at, Thomas. Yeah, this one is what loosens so that there's a nut, that, a bolt that goes through it and slides in that groove. This is so I can change the height of my guide post assembly. Why would I want more blade exposed or less blade exposed? Got a bigger piece of wood. So if I take that piece of wood from right there behind you. This one behind you. Yes, sir. And the operator stands on the front of the machine. Stand on the rear. We'll stand on the rear, huh? Right. The wood is supported by a table, and the table can tilt. Underneath the table, there are two locks. I want you to back the camera away from the machine three feet and keep it there. So I can tilt the table. Now the table, if I, if I get a square, it should be this bolt here that it sits on. Then I'll lock the two table locks in place. And that keeps the table from, from wobbling. If I change the blade, that's what this is for. So the blade can come in through here. The throat plate, that's in place so that little scraps won't get clogged up in it. Down below it, you also see, you might want to come and look at that, you also have a set of, of uh, adjustments that need to be made so that, so this, so this will actually be, it says it's way loose right now. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to leave it for now just to demonstrate. So there's a little piece on the edge of this, and that's so it won't vibrate within the insert. So it stays in one spot. I want to adjust the wood so that guys, anybody remember from another year? How much distance I want exposed there? A fingertip or an eighth of an inch. So I'll hold on to it, undo this knob here. You only want an eighth of an inch between the stock and the and the, and the bearing. And the whole idea is these bearings now are closer to the blade on either side, and it keeps that flexible blade from doing twisting stuff. Right now, the guides are way loose on the, on the bottom and on the top a little bit, but I'm still going to turn it on so you can see it. When I turn on the machine, I can, first I got to make sure it's plugged in. And we moved it over here because we needed 110 uh, voltage. Start the stop button. 
If I see that this bearing's uh, spinning right there, because I had it a little bit too close, I'm going to back it off a little bit. That one is on face, so when the blade is pushed against it, it'll start spinning to keep it from going way back and forth. This is not really meant to cut straight lines. So, it's meant to do this. And I hope you noticed that when I was cutting this, I had both hands on either side of the blade. Or, I got both hands on one side. I don't ever want to put my thumb right in line with the blade. Because if it's, if it's a hard piece of wood like oak or something and the blade's dull, you might be pushing a little bit and then when, and when it finally comes through there, you know, nobody wants to be surprised and have them cut the, thumb, the tip of their thumb off. The worst accident I've ever had as a teacher is, uh, that I can remember, is a kid cutting the end of his thumb. It cuts flesh as good as it cuts wood fibers. Well, it cuts... It cuts bone. Yeah. I mean, you chop your deer up with this. What makes this saw different than what they have at the butchers? Next to nothing. Then maybe the, the blade, this is a wood cutting blade instead of a bone cutting blade. Uh, the table can be tilted. It should be locked in place. This groove is for a miter gauge. The miter gauge is what we have on the table saw to put that thing in there so you, can, you have a piece go across to cut it at a certain miter, 90 degrees or 45. The, uh, you shouldn't back out of it. Please use eye protection. Keep your hair and the long hair and stuff out. Listen, listen to the machine. If it's making a squeal, then you're either you're twisting too far one way or the other. Something's going wrong. The guide post should be within an eighth of an inch of the material. Keep both hands free of the cutting line. Never put fingers in line with the cut. The table can tilt. It has two locks under the table. Inspect the throat plate for the proper position. Don't try to turn the stock more than the blade allows. The wider the blade, if I have a blade this wide, I gotta make a big arc. If it's a real skinny blade, I can make a tighter arc. Don't try to turn the stock more than the blade allows. Have the instructor help you change the ball bearing adjustments. Guide the work slowly, let the work do the, the machine do the work. And don't leave it. I'm sawing, okay? I'm sawing at my little puzzle. You only turn it as fast and as tight as the machine will allow. That blade's almost pushed out of the, of the guide there. So I can just walk away. Right? No, the machine's still moving. So the next guy that comes up is going to adjust the height, and he may not notice it's still going with other noises in the, in the shop. So you wait till it comes to complete stop.